What does it mean to be an atheist? There are a lot of misconceptions as to what atheism really is. To give just one example, there are some people who consider atheism to be some type of belief system to the same extent as any other religious belief. And this is wrong. And hopefully by the end of this video, we will put these misconceptions to rest. And furthermore, we will have a better understanding of what possibilities an atheistic approach to life can give you. Now, before I begin, it is necessary for me to state that there might be some elements in this video where some people might have a different understanding than I do, which is completely okay. I therefore invite you to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Okay, so first on the agenda, let's define atheism. And this is really quite simple. If we take a look at the word theism, this word describes a belief in some type of deity, supreme being or God. Now, the two most common belief systems within theism are monotheism and polytheism. Monotheism refers to the belief that only one God or deity exists. For instance, this is found in the Abrahamic religions such as Christianity, Islam and Judaism. Polytheism refers to the belief that multiple gods or deities exist. Such religions include Hinduism, Shintoism, various tribal religions in Africa and so on. So, atheism refers to a lack of belief in any god or deity. So, in terms of the previously mentioned misconception about atheism, atheism is not a belief system, it is not a religion. There is no affirmative belief that there is no god, it is simply a rejection of the assertion that there are gods. The reason for this is that there is no evidence for the existence of any god, and as a result of this, some people, not surprisingly, simply lack a belief in gods. Furthermore, the god hypothesis is just not a logically sound explanation, because by inserting a god as an explanation for the existence of everything, you have yet to explain the existence of that god itself. So it is basically adding one problem onto another. Therefore, I would refer to atheism as being simply a state of mind where one doesn't deem it necessary to insert and live by unnecessary, unfactual and illogical explanations to the deep questions about the world we live in. Because none of us knows the answers to these deep questions such as what happens when we die, how did our universe come about and so on, all we can do is speculate, wonder and philosophize about the amazing reality we find ourselves in. Claiming that you know the answers to these questions, which religion tends to do, is simply a symptom of ignorance, or to be more specific, it is being ignorant of your own ignorance. Because in terms of these questions, we all have one fundamental thing in common. We all know nothing about this. So atheism is really just the recognition of this basic fact that we simply have no idea. And therefore atheism is really the default position until the burden of proof of any other explanation is met. So now that we have defined what atheism is, we can go deeper into what this point of view offers. And here we encounter yet another misconception. This misconception evolves around atheists having a lack of belief and I will sum it up with the following questions. The worldview of an atheist must be pretty depressing and uninteresting since they don't believe in anything. And what is the point of living your life if you don't believe that there is an afterlife? But before I address this, it is important for me to state that I don't speak on behalf of atheism. As I have mentioned before, atheism isn't some type of united belief system. There is no sacred atheistic scripture or the Pope of atheism. No, nobody thinks completely alike. We all have our own understanding of the life we lead and the perspective we have on the reality we find ourselves in. What I want to do is to share my viewpoint as to what possibilities I think an atheistic approach to life can give you. So when it comes to the viewpoint that atheism must be depressing and uninteresting because of the lack of belief, I would say quite the contrary. The recognition of the basic fact that there are some aspects about our world that we have no knowledge of, we can call it the gaps in our understanding of reality, 
isn't depressing or uninteresting at all. If anything, it is compelling, fascinating and captivating. It is, if not the greatest, stimuli of our human instinctive curiosity. Instead of inserting a god as an explanation when it comes to these gaps in our knowledge about our world that we haven't yet or perhaps never will be able to explain empirically, we should be open to the idea that everything, truly everything, is possible when it comes to answering these deep questions. Since none of us here on planet Earth actually possess the required knowledge in order to truly answer these questions, we then shouldn't be fixated on one simple explanation that, in terms of religion, simply is rooted in a mixture of wishful thinking and the power apparatus of ancient theocracy. And that is really what separates believers from non-believers. You can either be fixated on one simple explanation which often leads to people sacrificing a great part of their quality of life due to whatever set of rules that follows their indoctrinated belief system, or even worse, sacrificing other people's quality of life with set rules that must be applied on everyone. Or you could come to the realization that everything is possible, which really can lead to some interesting thoughts and conversations if you enjoy philosophizing about the deeper aspects of life. One explanation could be that the entire universe and everything within it was created 15 seconds ago with the memory of a lifetime and you watching this video planted inside of your head. Another explanation could be that we are in fact living inside a computer simulation, so basically all we consist of is ones and zeros, and the god we should be praising isn't some holy deity. No, it could be a slightly overweight, middle-aged programmer with Cheetos smeared all over his entire face. But I'm pretty sure he won't be answering any prayers either. Now, I'm not saying that any of this is true or makes any sense at all. These are mere two possible explanations out of really an infinite amount. The point is that we don't have any way of knowing if any of these explanations are true, and the same goes for the God hypothesis. So there really isn't any reason why one should spend their whole life with the delusion that the one explanation they have planted inside of their head is the real deal. Now I know that some explanations might seem more probable than others, and I guess this is where the interesting thoughts and conversations really can bear fruit. And it is here we can try and fulfill our curiosity by seeking the most likely or perhaps best available explanations that we can gather from our observable universe. As long as we are all aware that the conclusions one might draw from their own reasoning is not something that can, as of now, be verified or tested, and therefore it is not something that qualifies as being the truth. Therefore, we should never settle for the easiest or perhaps most comforting explanations. We shouldn't get fixated on one simple explanation, especially if it's one that's not logically sound. No, we should be open to all possibilities and thrive on our curiosity, and not just put a lid on it with something easy and inconsiderate. But what is the point of living your life if you don't believe in anything, not even an afterlife? Being an atheist doesn't necessarily mean that one doesn't believe in anything. It just means a lack of belief in gods, as I have mentioned. Now, just because one doesn't believe in anything in particular, you know, not being fixated on one single belief, doesn't mean that that life is not worth living. Just as with the idea of there not being a god, with atheism there is no affirmative belief that there is no god, it's just that there is no evidence that points in the direction of there being a god. And also, it's just not a logically sound explanation, as I have also previously mentioned. The same applies to the idea of there being some form of afterlife. With atheism, there is no affirmative belief that there is no afterlife, it's just that nothing really points in that direction. The only thing we truly can confirm, however, is that we have this life that we know of, for a limited period of time, and this is regardless of what you believe. So, in terms of the question, what is the point of such a life? Well, the way I look at it is that this makes life so much more worth living. Realizing that these few years we have alive might just be all we have makes me, at least, 
cherish life even more. And there is nothing sad or depressing about that. We are the privileged owners of a brief spark of consciousness and therefore we should focus on that and not spend our life relying on some world elsewhere. No, focus on the world we happen to be living in right now and make the best of it, because this might just be it. And if you start looking, you will come to realize that this world we happen to be living in is really quite astounding. And it doesn't need any fairy tale explanations in order to make it seem even more magical. It is magical in and of itself, and that to me is the wonderful truth.